Hello, it's Ryan here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we're going to be doing another fountain pen video, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I did one a few years ago, then I did one two weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to do another one today, and hopefully I'll do one uh, more in another two or three weeks, where I'll do a kind of exploration, ink swatching thing. But today we're going to be doing an update to our collection. So, uh, many years ago I did the video, and I think I showed you all of the pens that I currently had. Uh, and uh, today we're gonna be updating some stuff. So I think in the original collection, I mentioned that I had a few things that I didn't show. So one of them should be this Kuwaiko. Um, I might've mentioned it, but I'll just mention it again here because I recently found it again. And uh, I'm enjoying using it more than I remember doing so. And that's great, I really love this color. And then we have this uh, fake Lamy. This is a Jin Hao. I think it was a Five, uh, 955 or something but the only good thing about this one is the stub nib here um, that is a 1.1 and it was really really useful for some stuff I did recently so I quite like that however this is not a very good pen it's not very well made um, but it works for the purposes that I use it for so yeah I had a Jin Hao 51A but it broke uh, actually no no never mind no, that one works fine but I had another one of these that was green, and that one broke recently. So, um, I mean, I, I haven't used it in forever, but it broke recently. So I'm definitely not gonna ever use it again, obviously. And I also wanted to mention this Zebra fountain pen that I had um, that I've never actually used, but I remember putting a cartridge in it. And when I opened it the other day to, to see if it still worked, the ink was basically still all there, and it actually writes, which is pretty interesting. However, I don't really like these hooded nibs um at all i don't really enjoy how they write i don't know how they i don't like how they feel and this pen is way too skinny for me to use comfortably so um that's kind of mentioning stuff that i that i previously owned that uh i didn't like using so recently i made a video about the Jin Hao 80s so here they are i bought these at the beginning of the month um and i love them i really enjoy them one of them is uh, inked up with lamy uh, sorry, with uh, Diamine uh, Oxblood, which would be this red one with the normal Jin Hao nib. And the other one I have with uh, with Oxford Blue, and I recently put this um, Lamy nib on it that I had because uh, I needed the normal steel nib that it, it comes with for a different pen since the nib on that one was really messed up. Uh, so the I changed those out. And I have two more pens here to show you to add to the collection. This one is the Jin Hao 82. And this is a great pen. It's very small, but I really enjoy it. And it's the only pen that I use that I have to actively post, besides the Kuwaiko Sport, obviously. Um, but I don't really actively use the Kuwaiko Sport all that much. And I really like how this feels. It has the right length and it has a very nice balance to it. I really enjoy writing with it. And this one has Aurora Borealis because it was the first ink I put in it. I fell in love with the combination, and when I tried using Writer's Blood, I didn't really like it. Um, I didn't I didn't feel, I, I didn't like how the combination of the colors felt. But Aurora, Aurora Borealis works really, really well in this pen. I don't know why, it just fits. And then we have this Jin Hao X159, and this one's a huge honker of a pen. It's also a very interesting colored pen. Uh, matches my sports here. And um, the, these two are basically my foray into non-black and silver pens um, after the initial failure that I had with this Koiko Sport because I really actually ended up not liking this uh, pen at all. So I kind of put it away and forgot about it for, for many years. And I came back into it with these. And I also have five pens from uh, AliExpress on the way. And uh, all of them are Jin House, I think, but uh, two of them are th this one but in different colors, actually three of them, I think. And then two of them are from some other company. I don't remember what they're called. And hopefully I get them here soon. So beyond that, I also ended up getting some new inks uh, when I kind of reignited my passion for this hobby. So we have Writer's Blood, uh, which is actually a pretty interesting color. It's pretty similar to Oxblood though. We have Green Black, which is not as green or black as you would think. Uh, actually, it's very green, it's not very black. Here we have Jet Black. This one is just a normal black ink. There's nothing really special about that one. Midnight, which to me just feels like a lesser version of Oxford Blue. And I don't love it, 
I don't hate it, but I, it's not really my favorite blue ink. We have Twilight, which is for sure one of my favorite inks. I really enjoy this color, although I haven't really had much time to enjoy it. Um, then we have Ancient Copper, which is one I really enjoy. It's currently uh, inking my um, my Koiko Sport since I've been using it recently. And finally, Aurora Borealis, definitely my, my favorite ink out of this batch and probably one of my new favorite inks overall. So, um, yeah, my previous collection was Waterman's uh, Black, Pelican Purple, Private Reserve um, Ebony Green, which is a, 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 a color I really like, but everything else about this ink sucks. It's, it's very finicky, it smells bad, and it clogs up my pen, so I only ink it in one pen, and that pen is like literally always gonna be Ebony Green. Then we have Takasumi. This is my second bottle of it. And my old Diamine collection was Oxford Blue. Makassar, which is a very nice brown. Oxblood, my favorite, my, one of my favorite uh, fountain pens of all time. Or fountain pen inks of all time. And Earl Grey, which is one that I, I only recently started loving, even though I've had it in my collection for quite a few years. And uh, it, this one stays in my lobby mostly, um, you know, and I, I don't really change that, that out all that much. So, yeah. And finally, I, I will do a writing sample for, for, for the pens, but I wanted to show you this notepad that I got. This is a Pen Gear notepad from Walmart. And uh, it's only 30 pages, but it's very, very good because Pen Gear uh, makes paper that is fountain pen friendly for the vast majority of, of situations. And it's one that I really, really like. So, yeah, most of the things that I use to write... Uh, on are actually pen gear branded and it's relatively cheap actually very cheap mostly except for a few different notebooks uh but everything else you know the norm normal spiral bound notebooks the composition books these little personal notebooks they're all very cheap and very accessible these are a dollar uh, and i think they're very very good and i also got myself a nice big uh ream of uh, loose tomoe river paper from Kino Kaniya, it was 18 bucks, which is actually cheaper than you would really think, although, you know, uh, broadly speaking, $18 for 100 sheets of paper is not that good, but it's very nice, I quite like it. However, I don't really think I enjoy writing on this paper at all. And um, I'll show you why, I guess. I made this ink sample thing the other day. I like uh, the ability to do this, so I made a bunch of folds in it to make it possible. And um, the problem is that it's so thin. And also, um, I've had an issue where things just take days and days to dry. And that's not something I really enjoy. And uh, the softness of this paper makes it very difficult for me to um, feel like I'm having a good time writing. I don't know. I, I don't know. Something about the, the way that pens glide on this paper is too smooth for me. It's not something I love. Um, but I really like how it makes inks look. That ebony green is insane. It has so much sheen. Uh, there's some sheen there in black for the ancient copper. Uh, looks like there's also some silvery sheen on Makassar. Dang, even green black has some sheen. Hiroshisuku has some sheen, which I've never seen before. Um, and yeah, Earl Grey, none of those are gray. All of those are like blue and purple, which is really interesting. And back here we have Oxblood. Sheen I've never seen before. Uh, Writer's Blood, which like I said, it basically looks the same. However, in, in real life, you can notice that this is wine colored, whereas this is more brown colored. Twilight, awesome color, I love it. It's so, so cool. Uh, Midnight here, as you can see, it's basically Oxford blue. Uh, this one is more of a, I think they're called washable blues, um, but I don't, I re really don't like this color at all. I love the Oxford blue though. It's very saturated, very, uh, you know, distinctly a single color. And here's Aurora Borealis with that nice little red sheen there. And I like that a lot. So as you can see, somehow I ended up with mostly blue and black inks, um, but it's what I like. So it is uh, it is what it is, right? One of my favorite inks are definitely Takasumi, Oxblood, Oxford Blue, and uh, I don't have a new, new, new favorite one, but it's probably gonna be Aurora Borealis. Because even though I really like the color of ebony green, I don't really enjoy uh, the rest of it, all of the other qualities that it has, right? So, 
yeah, Twilight's probably going to be one of my new favorites later on. So there you go. That's um, that. And here's an open version of that book where it's kind of my ink journal. So I kind of put every pen that I have, my Pilot Metropolitan, which is broken. I can't use it right now. Uh, my Lamy Safari with Earl Grey. Kawaiko Sport with Ancient Copper. Jin Hao with uh, Oxford uh, Blue and Oxblood. As you guys can see, it behaves very well. There's no feathering, there's no bleeding. Only when you uh, kind of do that thing there. Um, and I don't think you can really pick up all that much sheen, but there is some. So it's very good paper, honestly. And for a dollar, it's very good. Here's an 82. I recently just inked it up with uh, Aurora Borealis, and I didn't really like it with uh, Rider's Blood, but there it is. And that's it. And then back here, we have my Wingsung 308 with Ebony Green, uh, and that's permanently inked with that uh, pe pen color because I don't feel like going through the trouble of cleaning it out. So, yeah. Here's my Rhodia notepad, and uh, we're gonna do some writing samples for the new pens. So, uh, let me reset this a little bit, and then we can get down to doing that. So, that should be enough. There we go. Let's do the Jin Hao first. So this is... Jin Hao 80 with uh, Diamine. Oxblood in a fine and uh, I don't know how to do figure eights so <laughs> that's as, uh, as good as you're gonna get there you go now let's do Jin Hao 80 with Diamine, Oxford Blue, this is also a fine, but this is Lamy Nib, and again, I don't know how to do figure eights. And we have the Jinhao X159. You guys can see, I, I really like Jinhao's. I don't know. I, I think their affordability, um, while also having uh, pen models that are very uh, well liked and popular, is really good. You know, there's kind of an ethical concern there with copyrights and stuff like that. But um, broadly speaking, I don't think that any of these pens are particularly, uh, you know, <laughs> proprietary. Uh, so I'm not really sure how that kind of really works, but um, I don't know too much. So this one has Takesumi. I'm not going to write out the uh, the whole thing there, but you guys know what it is. And I think this is running out of ink because it, it hasn't really done that before. So, yeah. This one is a fine as well, but because this name is so huge, it <laughs> doesn't end up being like that. So, yeah. really like this one a lot this pen is pretty good uh initially i had a problem with the size but once i started using it i got used to it and i'm quite happy with it and it's much better than the original 159 which i own and it was a very bad pen because it weighed so so much it was kind of insane um but this new plastic version is very very good we have the chin hao 80 I know this is 82 actually. And we have Diamine, Aurora, Borealis. It's very hard to write <laughs> with a camera in the way. This is also a fine. Uh, I don't know, I just like fines overall.
and uh, I am going to eventually do an ink, ink exploration video where I actually show you the colors and the looks and vibes of all of the other pens that I did and I'll do some writing samples with them so uh, you guys can kind of uh, figure out how how they look and stuff but uh, oh I just realized that I, I kept moving further in <laughs> into the page oh well it's not a big deal um, but yeah, I, I will eventually do that. I have seven inks and I have a pretty interesting way of exploring it through uh, some stuff that I, I like, uh, mostly manga since my channel is mostly manga related. So um, when I do that in a few weeks, I'll uh, hopefully it'll be fun and interesting to you guys and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. So yeah, I'll probably end up doing it on clear fontaine paper though, just so I have a lot of space to work with and I'll have to find a better setup because it's really hard to write with this in front of me, so I don't know. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, the four Jin Hao pens that I added to my collection. And there's going to be a few more coming my way. And so I'll probably end up doing a video about them as well. So there you go. That's um, my update to my pen collection, my ink collection, and my paper collection. So there you go. Thank you guys very much for watching. And see you guys uh, in a few weeks when I do the next video.